Hello, my name's Rolf Parker. Uh, I'm an artist and I'm here today to tell you a little bit about the different sorts of pictures that I do. Uh, I do these pictures to sell them in my little shop which is in Cockermouth in South Street. Um, I'm going to show you a few of the different techniques I do to make these pictures. So I hope you enjoy it. To start with, I'm just going to give you a quick tour around the walls in my shop to show you the different kind of pictures I do. Uh, won't be long. This is called the pastel, and it's well, you can probably tell where it's supposed to be. Picture of marketplace there. <coughs> I also do landscapes. Um, I'll show you the pastels that I use to do these in a minute upstairs, but I'm just going to show you the different things I do. Uh, these are lino cuts. It's a kind of a print, but it's a handmade print. Uh, the other kind of thing I do is called uh, etching which again is a type of print and it looks a bit different from the lino cuts not as colourful now we're upstairs in the studio uh, I'm just going to do a quick demonstration of what it's like to start off uh, a pastel picture but first I thought I'd just show you the colours, the type of pastels that I use so these are pastels they're sort of like chalks, they're not like probably the pastels you have at school which are waxy sort of crayons um, these are a bit more like chalks uh, as you can see there's quite a lot of colours um, I didn't have all those colours at first when I started out and I, I have had to save up a little bit to buy them because <laughs> they're not that cheap art materials but anyway you can have a look lots of greens. I'm going to be working from photographs for this picture so that is a picture I took. You can probably tell where it is. Um, out of all those colours that I showed you before obviously I don't need all of those colours for this picture so it's quite important when you, before you start to make a little to choose your colours and so I've made a little got a scrap piece of paper and I've just noted down a few of the colours I'm using which I've laid out here I'll start with a quick sketching out um, just to get the basic shapes in quite quickly doesn't matter if you make a mistake all these pastels you can go over them to correct things later on Right, let's see. Let's see where the middle is. Right. The paper I'm working on here is uh, sort of slightly grey, browny. It's not white, you know, so it's quite nice. When you use a light colour, it's going to really stand out. I thought I'd actually do more of that sort of sky because uh, it's a bit more interesting than this one, it's a bit boring so I'm borrowing the sky off that picture, photograph. I'm just going to start putting a few shadows in sunlight and shadows in a 
picture always makes it look more realistic and interesting. Trying to work out what colour shadows are is always a very interesting part of a, doing a picture, I find. They're not just grey, there's all sorts of other colours in them that are reflecting the other parts of the picture, reflecting the sky, which is blue, so you get bluey shadows, reflecting the sun on a building, so it's more browny, these sorts of things. So far I've been putting quite light colours in, quite pale colours, because uh, it's quite a sunny day here. Uh, but I think pictures always get more interesting when there's more contrast and some dark colours in, so let's see what happens when we put some of this in. The reason I started with light colours is because if you start with dark colours it all might tend to end up a bit grubby looking, but if you start with light colours uh, and then put the dark over it seems to work better. Okay, I've done a little bit more on the picture now, but uh, it's just starting to come together. I think uh, there's, there's a long way to go, but I think it's a good start, shall we say. That's the photo I'm sort of working from. Um, um, a little bit messy, yeah, if you zoom in. It's just fairly messy, but the colours do give the impression of the sunshine, I think, which is, which is a good thing. So uh, I'll just carry on with it and put all the details in as I go on. Um, I think it's worth saying that colour is very important uh, if you're trying to paint realistic pictures. Um, it's one of the main things. It's just as important as getting everything in the right place and getting all the, the detail in but getting the overall colours to give the impression that you want is a very important thing. Uh, I've just finished two pictures of uh, a landscape subject here that are quite similar views of both of Grasmore, one of our local mountains and um, before I put them in the frames I just wanted to show you them so you, you can see the differences in the colours because even though they're both of the same subject it will illustrate how I'm really interested in the different colours you get uh, with different light effects, different times of year, that sort of thing. Uh, this is the autumn one and that is the summery one. Um, they're not identical views, one is from a bit higher up the hill, which is this one, but you can see how the colours are completely different, and it's not just because it's autumn, it's also a different time of day, this is later in the day, so there's much more shadow in the foreground, plus the light is actually more golden coloured, uh, a bit more bluer on that one, which is earlier in the day. So I'm just going to show you a few close-ups so you can get the idea. See here the clouds. Now those are quite soft and smudgy looking compared to some of the foreground areas like these. And that is so partly to make them appear more distant. Um, this area is quite contrasty, quite sharp, it's in the foreground. Um, but it isn't a hard and fast rule, you can change that. Now on this one, I've done the opposite. And on this one, the foreground, I didn't want you to concentrate on the foreground when you were looking at this picture so much as the mountain. So actually the foreground, there's not much detail in it. If you look closely, it's a little bit soft and smudgy looking. Look at that. 
quite you know just little marks and smudges whereas the detail is a bit more on the hill there in the background and what that helps is helps you to focus on the main part of the subject which I thought was the mountain with the sun on it in this one so there's different little things you can do to uh, sort of make the picture make sense when you're looking at it really um, the other thing I can point out is that even though I'm trying to do realistic pictures they're really not so much an exact copy of a photograph as an impression um, what I'm trying to do is take the important elements of that photograph I'm looking at and one of these important things very much is the colours as you can see from the colours it all helps to make light and shade sunshine shadows you know um, and also to make to use tones which is light and dark uh, you can see that tones in the distance are sometimes less dark than those in the foreground which is that tree um, again not a hard and fast rule because if you've got a sunny area in the foreground that's going to be light uh, but often the colours in the foreground are stronger um, just look at those greens there and then here are the greens that are on the hillside in the background they're more they've got a lot more grey in them and a bit more blue in them um, and that gives the effect of distance it takes them back away from you uh, the other thing I was going to say yeah um, I was talking about them not being so much copies of photographs as giving you an impression well even the sort of detailed areas like for example the house if you look really closely you see it's not that detailed after all it just when you look at the whole thing from a distance it gives you the impression of being realistic um, on this one for example here these trees by the lake they're quite you know they hardly look like trees they're just like smudgy little bits of colour but when you look at the distant shot they register as being oh yeah those are trees that are down near the lake there so that was that I'm just going to explain a little bit about one of the printmaking techniques I use um, this is all about uh, lino cutting doing a lino cut this is the actual picture that you might end up with that's one I did with the uh, kind of view of the main street with Christmas lights on um, to arrive at that image there's quite a lot of different processes involved so it's quite a bit complicated but basically the idea of doing a print is so that you get more than one you get a, a few of them and hopefully if people like them then you can sell a few you don't just, just sell one but also they have a particular look to them which is different from a painting um, I'll explain how I did this now uh, okay to start off I did a drawing I traced the drawing there's a bit of tracing paper the reason for that is whenever you print off something it's always going to be the other way round so that I traced down onto this which is what this is called lino these were just blank in the beginning um, <clears throat> and the reason it's called lino cutting is because you use these these little sort of sharp tools to actually um, gouge out this lino and what you're what you're aiming for is for the 
untouched parts uh, is going to be in the shape of your design or what you want to print basically is these raised parts here what you're cutting out is all the bits you don't want and what you're leaving is the bits you want to print off now to actually do a picture with that many colours you can't just do it all off one piece of lino so I actually had to do four and that Let's see, that was, that's the first one I actually print, and that is going to, I printed that up with a, mostly a yellowy ink, which gave you the sort of background, that pale yellow there. And then the next one was what printing these slightly darker browny sort of colours and then that one would be printing the sky area and then finally the one which looks probably more like the drawing than anything else is that one and that one I printed the dark areas, in other words, the trees, the sort of dark lines. Um, that one took longer to do because it's more detailed. You would put that piece of paper over there. And then it goes in this little machine here, which is a printing press. Um, goes down like that. And make sure it's tight and then that's printed I'm not actually doing it but I'm just showing you how it's sort of done so when you peel that off it would have the image on there I'll just talk a little bit about this one with the sky because to get that, I don't know if you can tell but that sky is sort of darker at the top than it is at the bottom and to get that effect what you'd actually do when you um, when you uh, when you're rolling your ink out is you'd put the lighter ink at one side, the lighter blue and the and the darker blue at the other side, so that when you're rolling like that, it sort of all mixes together but you get the dark at one side blending into the light at the other side and then when you ink that up you get that darker at the top and lighter at the bottom so it's just one of the little effects that you can do what you have to do is you got printing ink um, and you put a bit on this, there's just a piece of glass and then with this roller, which is a rubber roller you have to roll the ink out so it's sort of all over there and then <clears throat> you would actually roll that art across your design so that the colour just goes on those raised parts there and then got your piece of paper goes on the top and then over to the press which I'll just show you in a sec I did actually paint the little lights in with watercolour afterwards so they weren't printed they were painted in afterwards that's one before the lights are printed uh, sorry painted <laughs> uh, see and that's the one with the coloured lights you don't have to make uh, do a complicated picture with all those colours in. You can just do one with one colour in. Um, I actually did that um, 
which is the, sh the logo for my shop. Uh, and the idea with that was it was a print to go onto a paper bag. Uh, now I'm going to talk a little bit about another printmaking technique which is called etching. Uh, now this one was that picture of the rooftops that I think I showed you before and this is a printing plate which is a piece of metal basically uh, and that was what I used to get that image onto the paper. Now again you might say why go through quite a complicated process to do a picture where you could just do one and draw it. Well, there's a few reasons, I suppose. One is that you end up with, um, you can print more than one of them. I've actually printed nearly a hundred of these, so you can sell more than one picture. The other thing is, you can make them cheaper because there's more than one, so more people can afford to buy them, I suppose. And the other thing again is that it has a certain look about it that is different from say a painting or an ordinary drawing I suppose. Anyway, start with a blank piece of metal. Um, then you'd put wax on this and then scratch into it. That will be left in some acid and when it comes out where you scratch the lines is it's called being etched into the metal so you get these lines as little grooves in the metal um, once you've got the plate basically you have to ink it up to print it which you use one of these things which is a, a sort of dabber I suppose you, you put your ink on there and then you, it goes you go like that and it goes all over there in the cracks uh, and then you have to sort of wipe a lot of that off you can start off with a piece of paper but you end up doing it with the this part of your hand and you're sort of skimming like that and then the ink comes off on your hand but it stays in the little cracks and then I'll show you to print that we go to the a different sort of press which is the etching press which I'll show you here and um, just have to get that the etching press now so we've got our inked up little plate there that goes on there we've got the piece of paper that goes on top put these down blankets and you that's wound through at quite high pressure and it actually what it actually does with these blankets and that roller it sort of pushes the paper into the little cracks and so when you take the paper off I know I haven't done it properly but your image will be on there basically I'll just show you quickly a few more examples of uh, etchings that I've done so you can see a few different ones um, there we got that's actually a view of Cockermouth with the barrel bridge and the brewery a few daffodils in the foreground um, landscape Water. Here's a view of Cockmouth. It's behind the castle. Another landscape view of Buttermere. One side of it. That's actually in Whitehaven. Fisherman. And that one is just 
a view of some beech trees that I rather liked. So those are all etchings. So thanks for listening and I hope you've enjoyed hearing a bit about what an artist might do. Bye.